Today, we're checking out the brand new Mackie Showbox, which is a six channel battery powered speaker that has a breakaway mixer. You get six different inputs. There's 12 hours of battery life. You have built-in effects and compression. You have an option for a foot switch for more control of the mixer. You have a USB-C port for recording directly to a computer, phone, or tablet. You also get an SD slot for recording your entire show, and it even has a looper built into it. But I think the thing that's really cool about the system is the breakaway mixer. So the mixer can connect to your speaker, and you can leave it there, or you can bring it out and connect it to your mic stand or wherever you want to put it. The mic clip is included, by the way, and it connects with just a standard Cat5 cable. Ever since seeing this at NAMM 2024, I've been very curious about this system, and I'm very grateful that Mackie sent this over for me to review for the channel. This is not a paid video or anything like that, and just as always, all the opinions in this video are my own. I think this is a great option for solo or duo musicians that have to run their own sound, and that's exactly how I used it live, and I'll share my experience of using it live at the end of the video as well. If you do decide that this system is right for you, there will be purchase links down below in the description. That's enough of the intro. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And let's check out the Mackie Showbox. So here's the speaker right here. I'm going to leave it on a pole for this part of the video. You turn here on the side and you can see the controls are here. But again, this will break away and I'll show you that here in a second. Let me just run over some of the inputs and outputs here on the back. So this can be used with just a standard IEC cable, which is included, but you can see I'm running this off of the built-in battery. And you do charge the built-in battery using that cable as well. You have two XLR inputs, two quarter inch inputs meant for guitar, especially for acoustic guitars. You have this section right here, which is two quarter inch line inputs or a 3.5 millimeter input or a Bluetooth pairing. And the thing that's actually cool about this is you can actually use all three of them at the same time if you want to, which is a nice feature. You have the send and return port here if you want to use your own pedals or effects or anything like that. There's a foot switch input, which I'll go over here later. You have a headphone out and a mix out. There is a headphone out controller on the mixer. This USB-C slot is for connecting to your computer, phone, or tablet so you can live stream or something like that or even record direct from the speaker. You even have an S SD slot to record your entire set. There's a button on your mixer that just says record, start recording to the micro SD, and you can record your entire set. You have this port right here to connect a Cat5 cable to use as a breakaway with the mixer. They do include the cable, but any Cat5 cable should work. And again, you can control everything from this little mixer right here that lives right here. You can leave it there, or you can push this button right here to release this mixer, and then it comes out like this, and you connect the provided Cat5 cable in here, and now you have control over how you want to mix everything. And this mixer also includes a clip that will clip onto your mic stand. You just attach it here in the back and then you can connect it to your mic stand easily, as you can see that I did at one of my shows. Really clever design. I really like everything they thought of with this. Okay, next up, I'm going to show you the controls on the mixer itself. So I'm going to take this off of the speaker, and I'm just going to film the mixer itself so it's easier to see, but it is connected to the speaker. So first of all, you have your main volume control over here. Pretty obvious. You get little LED lights letting you know how loud it is. And you have a mute switch right here if you just need to mute everything. Pretty straightforward. Now over here is where you can select the individual channels that you want to control. So right now it's on channel 1. If I want to change channel 2 or channel 3 or channel 4 or channel channel 5, 6, or the aux and Bluetooth, I can just click the button and then start making changes to whichever channel I want to change. So I'm going to go to channel 1 and change the volume. Let's go to channel 2 and bump the volume. Channel 3, turn down the volume, and so on and so forth. Very easy to control, and it makes a lot of sense. So let's go back to channel 1. I'm going to start making some EQ adjustments. So you have low, mids, and highs. So I can change each of the different channels and change the EQ settings on each of those channels. You also get a one-knob compressor, which is really nice. Do you want more compression or less compression? I did find that the compression actually works really nicely on this. I wouldn't put it all the way up, but putting it at noon if you want something pretty compressed sounds really good. All right, next up for the effects. So you have two different effect slots down here. As you can see, as I turn the knob, it's not doing anything. That's because I need to assign one of the effects. So I'm going to push this button in. It starts blinking, and I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to set it to one of the built-in effects. So small chorus, large chorus, delay, delay in chorus, overdrive, all sorts of different ones in here. So let's say I'm just going to choose a 
small chorus. That's what I want on this channel. I'm gonna push it in to assign it and then decide how much of the small chorus I want. So do I want less or do I want more? I also can do the same thing on this one. This is where you're gonna find more of your reverbs. So you have plate reverbs, room reverbs, hall reverb, spring reverb, and then you have some other ones that were on the left side as well, including delays and chorus and stuff like that. And I will do a tone demo of these reverbs a little bit later, but let's set it to small plate and then I'm gonna set my level accordingly. Now, does this mean that on all the channels I have to have small chorus and small plate? No, I get individual control of each effect that I want on each channel. So if I go to channel two, you'll see nothing is assigned right now. So I'm gonna assign this one to a slow delay and this one I'm going to set to a large hall reverb and dial those in accordingly. Channel three, I'm gonna set that one to a crunch and a spring reverb. A lot of mixers, they basically give you one effect and it just goes to all channels and you choose how much you want. On this one, you have two effects on each of the channels. I love that, that is very cool. Although you do not get any effects on channel five and six or the Bluetooth or the aux, which most people probably won't need anyways. You can see I literally can't put anything onto those. I also can't do any compression or the effects loop, but I can adjust the volume gain and the EQ on that channel. And if for some reason there's an effect that you specifically want, you have that effect send return and you can dial in how much of that signal you want to put in on each channel. So say I have my own reverb that I really like, I'm gonna plug that into the send and return. And then on channel four, I'll add some of that effect loop into here. Put a little bit on channel three, so on and so forth. Although I do find that the reverbs and delays in here are quite nice. Couple other controls here. When you are ready to start recording your set, you just push this SD record button. I don't have an SD card in there, so it wouldn't work. But all you have to do is just push it once to start it, push it again to stop it, and it'll save to the SD card. You also have this headphone output right here. So especially if you're using this with like in-ear monitors or something like that, plug in your in-ear monitors to that headphone out and you have control over how loud you can hear yourself in the in-ear monitors, which is definitely very nice. You do have a looper here. Pretty crazy that a speaker has a built-in looper with it, but it is pretty straightforward. And he even says it here on all the different controls. Push it once to go into record mode and it'll be blinking. Push it again and the white light is solid. That means it's playing. And then touch it again and it'll go back to overdub and it'll switch between overdub and play mode. If you double tap it, it'll stop the loop and you can hold it and it'll clear the loop. You do get more controls over this with the foot switch and I will show you that a little bit later and you have the level of the loop right here so you might have noticed that there are other options as well in here or like sub menus or something like that for example there's volume but there's also gain right underneath it to access the gain just tap the fader and you can see now I'm in gain mode and I can make adjustments to either the volume or the gain on channel two if you're more of a beginner with mixers the easy way to think about it is gain is the level going into the mixer and then volume is the level going out of the mixer but I have control over both you can see there's none on the EQ or anything like that but there is one under the effect ones. But if you push it, it just switches the effect. So how do you access the tuner and the snapshot? So what you have to do is you have to hold it and then it will get into the tuner mode. And you can see the tuner looks like this. I've plugged in my guitar, which is really nice that you have a built-in tuner for this because I have a feeling a lot of people will use this to play like acoustic guitar and vocals and stuff like that. When I'm ready to get out of tuner mode, just push the button and it goes back. Same idea over here. You hold to get into snapshot mode and I will show you how to do snapshots here in a little bit. There is also also, really cool controls to mute basically any of the channels, but also remove any of the effects. So watch this. So I'm going to quickly double tap the volume button and it's going to turn red and it's muted that channel now. You can see that it's muted. Double tap it again to unmute. But this is also what's really cool. I can double tap any of the EQ buttons and it will flatten out the EQ. So let's say I drop the lows, add some mids and drop the highs, but then I double tap any of them and now it's set it back to flat just temporarily so I can hear the difference. That's a really cool touch. Same thing works on the compressor as well. So if I have the compressor at noon and then I can double tap it and hear how it sounds without the compressor. Same thing with the effects as well. I can quickly double tap and mute the effects. Although there is a faster way to do this with the foot switch, which I'll go over in a little bit as well. And of course, you can also do the same with the effect loop. That is really cool. There is also an auto gain feature in here, which is really nice. So you can see if I clip the signal, which you can see if I just tap on my instrument cable, you can see that it's given me a red indicator saying that I've clipped the signal. So you can set the gain manually, or what you can do is you can hold the first button and it'll start blinking and it'll let you know that that is in auto gain mode. And then I can start strumming my guitar. As I strum, you can see it's bringing up the gain, it's bringing up the gain and it's settled on noon. So that's where I should have the gain at. Awesome that it has an auto gain setting. So you can set your gain accordingly 
accordingly. The more you dive into this thing, the more there's some really cool features. And speaking of cool features, there's also snapshots. You have five different snapshots that you can save. So if you have multiple configurations, you can save all of your settings and then recall them later when you're ready to play a show. So to get to snapshots, hold effect two until it goes to snapshot. You can see you can scroll through five of them or you can get all the way to the end and back out. It took me a minute to find out how to get out of snapshot mode when I tried to get into it. But I'm gonna go to one of the snapshots. Let's go to snapshot one. I can either save or recall snapshot one, or I can back out of it and go to a different one. So let me go ahead and save this to snapshot one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to channel one, take note of where everything's set at. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn everything basically off, basically everything all the way to the left, either at zero or completely off for everything. Now I'm gonna go back to snapshot one. I'm gonna recall this time. And you can see that channel one is set back to the settings that I had before. And we'll do that on all the channels. So let me do the same thing on all of them, on channels two, three, four, five, six, all of them. I'm gonna set basically off, snapshot one, recall, and you can see all of my settings that I had are completely back. And you have five different snapshots that you can save. There is also the optional foot switch that you can get with this. You do need to make sure you connect this with a TRS cable, but it is provided if you get this one. So you plug that in and it plugs into the foot switch port on the back of the speaker. The button on the left will control the looper. So you can see as I push it, you can see the looper is changing just in the same way if I push the looper, which is great if you're an acoustic guitar player, you're going to want to loop with your feet, not with your hands. Double tap to stop, hold it to clear, all of it works. And then the second one is great because it will turn off all the effects on all the channels. Channels. You can see all the channels have the effects muted. Step on it again and it's unmuted. That can be great is that you can have your effects on and then turn them off for talking to the crowd and stuff like that. That's definitely very helpful. And remember, you can connect USB-C into a computer or a tablet or something like that and record directly. So you can see that Logic found the show box and I can record directly into Logic, which is how I'm going to demo the effects. So here's some of the effects, some of the ones that I would use. Mic check, check, check. Test, test the, the mic. mic. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Test the microphone, test microphone. Delay in chorus. Delay in chorus. Delay in chorus. Here's overdrive. Small plate at noon. Probably is too much, so let me dial it back. Small plate. Large plate at noon. Large plate. Room reverb. Room reverb. Large room. Large room. Small hall, small hall, large hall, large hall. Spring reverb, spring reverb. Delay, Delay and reverb. And reverb. reverb. Delay and Delay reverb. reverb. All very usable, just less is more, I found. There's also a few more settings I didn't go over yet. Up here at the top, you have four different buttons that you can enable. So you can turn the LED lights off in the front if you want. There is a feedback eliminator, which is nice just to have on. If you are outdoors, you can push the outdoor mode button, which is nice. And then PA mode, basically my understanding of this is set it to PA mode if you're using it as a typical loudspeaker. But if you're using it more as a busking type of thing, set it to amp mode and turn it off. But again, just always use your ears. And last but not least, you have the case for it. This is a really nice case. I definitely recommend getting it if you get the speaker. Fits the speaker nice and snug. You have two different pockets, so you can store the Cat5 cable, the mic clip, power supply, foot switch, guitar cables, IEC cable just in case. And again, you have this whole second pocket right here for storing even more stuff, which is great. My favorite thing is that you can carry it either with this handle right here or it has straps to carry it like a backpack. I love that. I wish every case had this as an option. I can't tell you how nice it is to do a one trip load in if you can do it. Sorry to rub that in drummers. But yeah, I love this case. As far as pricing, as of the time of shooting, the speaker itself is $7.99. The case for the speaker is $79. I definitely recommend getting that. And then the optional foot switch is $39. There will be links down below in the description or you can use the QR codes on your screen now if you are interested in checking this out for yourself. As far as my experience with this, I did use it live. I used it in two different ways. First show, I used it with my 90s cover band and we used it as a center fill for kind of the people who are kind of closer to the stage, just the way that the speakers are placed, the people right at the front kind of miss it a little bit. So we usually try to have a center wedge there. I used this, it worked great. It got nice and loud, it sounded really full. It worked incredibly well. And then the day after that, I was able to do an acoustic duo with my wife. And that was the one I really wanted to test this out for because I really think that's who it's catered to. But it worked perfectly for our acoustic duo. Two vocal mics, 
two acoustic guitars, and then Bluetooth to play when we were on our breaks. And I think the thing that's really cool about this is that you're able to adjust things on the fly, especially the reverb and the effects. That's really nice. So if you're doing you know, more of a standard song, if I was singing a Johnny Cash song or something like that, I wouldn't have a bunch of effects on my vocals. But then if I did a song by The Weeknd or Pink Floyd or something like that, and I wanted to add that reverb and delay and those type of vocal effects, it's really nice that it's just right there on my mic stand, turn it up, sing the song, and then turn it back down when I'm done or use the foot switch to turn off the effects. They really thought a lot of this out, and I think it's a really cool design. I did have an issue updating the firmware. I don't know if that's a really big deal. You have to use the software and then put it into firmware update mode, and it just never found it. Not a big deal to me. That could just be a problem with my computer, possibly. There was an interesting thing where there's this clicking sound on channel three. If I turned the master volume up, and channel three volume all the way up, you could hear it. I reached out to Mackie to let them know I was having that issue, and they told me to check to see if the Bluetooth was trying to pair, and sure enough, that's what it was. So just disable the Bluetooth or make sure you're paired to something with Bluetooth if you do have that problem. The cable for it is really bright green. I don't know if it really fits for everyone's style, but do just keep in mind, you can always switch it out for any other Cat5 cable and any length as well. If you think it's too long or too short, you can always switch to another Cat5 cable. So I don't think this is really targeted towards someone who has to have you know control over their exact compression settings the attack the ratio the knee all that stuff or exact control with the eq with the graphic eq that's probably not who this is targeted for however it is still really nice just of how easy it is just to set a few things and i do think that this can be a benefit to someone who is a solo musician or a duo act like I said, that's the way that I used it. And you don't want to make anything too complicated. If you just want more reverb, you just turn up the reverb. If you want a little more compression, just turn up the compression. You don't have to think about it too much, especially since you have control right there. It's attached to your mic stand. If you have to run your own sound, which most of us do when we perform solo, it's definitely a huge plus. I don't want you to think that's super simple either. There's also a lot of features that are included with it, which is what I like about it. I like the simple design and the fact that it has a bunch of features with it. So once again, thank you to Mackie for sending this over for me to check out. I really appreciate it. And if you guys do decide that this is something that's right for you, there are purchase links down below in the description. If you use those links, it is a free way to support the channel at no extra cost to you. And if you guys did find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to feed the YouTube algorithm gods. Two other videos of mine to check out. First of all, check out my electric guitar that I use that has all my amps, effects, cabs, everything is saved into the guitar. So I don't even need a pedal board like a Helix or a fractal or anything like that. It pairs perfectly with the Mackie. And also check out my video that I did of 60 cool products at NAM 2024. That's where I first heard of the Mackie Showbox and they have some other really cool stuff as well. You can check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.